And we're back as I mess with my mic stand because this thing is so loose. It's like, look at that shit. Fight Junkies, welcome back. Today's an exciting day. Um, you guys know that I'm a little older than some of the, the MMA journalists, even though I'm not a journalist. I'm a combat vet. Let's go, baby. So, you know, I've been watching mixed martial arts and UFC since way back in the day. Um, and today I have a legend of the game, Tony Fricklin's in the house, um, straight from Boston. Well, <laughs> he lives in Vegas now, but uh, he's fought in every single, almost every single, you know, organization that you could think of. Um, and now he gives back to the community and trains and helps the, the youth. And uh, he's a, one of my best friend, Marcus Deegan. Shout out to Marcus for, for hooking this up. He's his, his coach. Um, how you doing? Thanks for coming, brother. What's up, Bob? How you doing, man? Good, good. How's it going? Thank you for having me, man. It's just, uh, everything's all right, man. The weather's changing. Uh, my allergies are kicking up. It sucks. <laughs> Which is really actually, uh, I just popped in my head. So like, do you have any Kleenex around here? But uh, no, really, it's uh, everything. Everything's going well. We're in a little bit of a, a holding. I'm, just, I'm teasing about I that. I got Mucinex. Uh, no, you can't use the Afrin and stuff like that. You get addicted. No, these, these, that's no, like... no Afrin stuff in this one. <laughs> okay. This one's just a healthy one. <laughs> it's been a while. Uh, and then there's a Claritin D back in the day, and they said that was that's like the same thing as taking like uh, some other. Oh, uh, I remember they were they were saying to make it. It was like uh, it was like a speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To help yeah, you yeah. open your yeah, your chest up. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're taking it to compete. You take this before soccer games and shit like that. You're like, yeah. What you like, what you <laughs> Scored okay, uh, 38 <laughs> points. So hey guys, how you doing? Anyway, yeah. so back back to some. So uh, no, everything's well, man. Uh, like I said, just. Uh, Weather's changing. We're back in. Back. We're always in the grind, and uh, I'm just, you know, enjoying getting into the holiday season here. Right? What's up with you? Same. I I just said that one of the um, one of the workers in the back. Workers in the back sounds horrible. Yeah. One of the engineers and editors in this building. <laughs> uh, <laughs> beautiful sticky paws. <laughs> workers in the back. Well, they labor do, camp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> soccer balls together. Practically, back there. you know what? <laughs> they do. They do work in the back. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I was like. They said you look good, and I said, "Yeah, I feel good because it's not 130 degrees." Exactly. That's it's got. Kind of <laughs> you can't be if you don't live in Vegas, so you, you don't know. If you're a soldier and you've been to Iraq or Kuwait, God forbid, yeah. um, it's so hot you don't even want to go take a piss in a porta potty. Yes, that's how Vegas. So once it cools down and there's a breeze, and we open, you could open the windows yeah. and take a walk. It's like my whole everything in my body is just happier. Yeah, I've, you know? I've seen people I haven't seen since last year at, at, at the you know walking through the <laughs> yeah. uh, up and. Downtown Summerlin with the dogs and stuff like this. Oh, I haven't seen this last year. It's just as hot as balls. That's why. Yep. And that's finally okay to walk the dog at at, at 10 a.m. You know what I mean? It's like that's so true. My dog has not, unfortunately, until recently, been to a dog park. You know, he's just been because he's a black lab oh. and a pit bull miss. He he'll die. Oh. He can't go outside. How old is he? Uh, five. Oh, oh what's yeah. his name? Jack. Jack. Yeah, Black Jack. I got him from. Black, black, it's fucking racist. No, no, I was just kidding. No, I was just no, kidding. No. I was just kidding. Maybe a little bit. No, 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 a little bit. <laughs> no, Black Jack. Oh, Vegas. We're in Vegas. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Woo! Oh, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, let's go. No, I just had a friend of mine who was black tell me that uh, my white white uh, privilege card's been revoked because I look so too gangster. <laughs> I said, I don't know how it is to be black, but if you get pulled over at night with face tattoos, you immediately have no white privilege. Yeah, yeah, no, it's done. It's gone. We vote immediately. It's gone immediately. <laughs> if you look like me, uh, you're in trouble. Yeah, so it's it's cooling down. How's everything? So, all right, there's a lot of newer fans. Uh, you're very well known in the community, in the community, but for the people that are kind of casuals that are tuning in, um, can we dive in a little bit back in the, like, yeah, the Boston yeah, days? Yeah, go and, for it. That's a, that, well, again, too, yeah, I mean, if you're going to dig super deep, Again, I might need Kleenex. I'm a super emotional guy. No, go ahead. Go ahead. That's go ahead. so funny. <laughs> no, who, I bet I cry more than you. <laughs> no, I cry all the time. It's going to be a no, competition. No, no, no. Who I cry, cry more? I promise myself, no matter how, dig they de how deep they dig, I, I love I love going. So I I'm open book. So enjoy yourself. Well, you're you're with family. You. You're a vet, man. He yeah, was in the Coast Guard yeah. for yeah. a couple years. Yeah. So I see your memorial bracelet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just some... yeah I just got the 22 a day. Um, I used to have a memorial right here. You can see where it's real dark. From my buddy Noah, that uh, he died in Afghanistan. Uh -huh. I, I was in Iraq with him, but I got I couldn't look at it every day, so I covered it up. You know, right? No, that's I, another. I feel you. Yeah, it's another dark road. It's a, it's a, a dear friend of mine gave me one of his friends just so I just remember, remember everyone. I love. So yeah, I, I take pride in. So being a Boston guy, how since we're gonna go back, 
I got to ask you about 9-11. My dad's a former um, Port Authority police officer. Mm -hmm. He was a sergeant, emergency services. He was uh, in the rubble for six months. Thanks. Excuse me. He took the day off, went to your favorite team, the Yankees game, the night before. <laughs> I'm going to get beat up today. So he, that's why I love the Yankees. He went right, to a right Yankee right. game, right swap, and the guy he swapped with died and working his shift. Yeah. How uh, being in, were, were you already out of Boston by then? Yes. Okay, but I'm sure it, you know for us East Coast guys in metropolitan cities, yeah, it was I mean, different. I, I was in and out, in and out. New York, Boston, New York, Boston, I was still traveling. Yeah, let's point. dive into that. So, what, what was the childhood like? And I normally don't do this, but I'm so I'm such a big fan. I'm so interested. And there's a lot. There's, it's so different now. It's like these kids wake up at two years old and they're doing jujitsu and wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> Back then, there wasn't many. There was like fake karate gyms uh, on every corner. Yeah. This is the fuck. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, I get, I get, again, again. Give you a whirlwind, and then we can get back to the details of it. like right now. I can tell you right now that question right now. I, I fucking knew it, because like I said, if, this, if if like I said, you want you want to tap into me, tap into me, and that was like the one that I go ah, if they tap into this because some of my feeling I'm 52 years old now. Yeah, I'll be 53 in in March, and uh, man, it, it's it's crazy. Fighting has so much pressure, and I enjoyed being a martial artist so much. You know what I mean? And then when I retired from fighting, I enjoyed being martial arts again. I got so much better that I wanted to fight again. Yeah. And now I'm like, oh my God, if I could fight now, I'd, I'd be killing people. They're not, people aren't doing what I'm doing and they're not seeing what I'm seeing. And, and that's obviously been my experience. Well, your peers so, are also probably making it worse because some of your peers are going back and fighting yeah. you know, at later in age. True, but also some of my peers are, are not training at all. And then like they're just all. going back in to fight? No, no, they're just not training at all. They're in different jobs. They're doing different things. And for me, that like some of my, a lot of my peers were also like doing what they did. They turned out to be fighters, and they retired from fighting, and they stopped training is my point. Gotcha. Do you know what I mean? Whereas I was a martial arts, so that's not right to fight. Let me see if I can fight with this stuff just in case. Uh, and then I said, let me train, train to fight so I can be a better coach when I retire from fighting. And I just want to get a few tastes, and I fell in love with it. Kept fighting, got to a, a, a decent level, got the UFC a decent level, got got the to highest, the highest level, <laughs> and then um, you know fought for a couple of belts, didn't get my outcome, and and retired. Had a banged up injuries, still run with those injuries, but as a martial artist, still be able to progress because now I don't have the, I can I can have a shitty knee and a bad whatever whatever whatever, and 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 still train masses and do seminars and do whatever and. and and travel and train and, and become a better martial arts in that time become a you know jujitsu black belt judo black belt things like that there's other other things that happen to me in this time yeah. do you know what i mean so since retirement but uh, uh, but uh how'd you get uh, into it you were just like you loved competition or were because back in the day it was like karate was yeah kind of what we my dad sent me to karate in like the late 80s just to have something like to dis i don't know if it was to get out of the house or to learn some camaraderie or discipline. But uh, I know there, like, I hear Dana say there wasn't, there, it was boxing was your day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dana was over there at, in South Boston at L Street Boxing. And uh, I, I think it was over at L Street Boxing. And uh, I was over there in Winchester, Massachusetts, was about eight miles, eight miles north. And, uh, and it was, a, you know, like a upper, upper middle class community. And, uh, and I was like, I just got in scraps all the time. You know, my first, the, Shannon Sullivan, I remember, she's going to get shot out. Shannon Sullivan, I remember in third grade, she, she blasted me in the stomach, and I ended up hitting her in the nose, and she got a, a bloody nose. But she was way bigger than me. She was a year ahead of me, too. She was, but the girls grew bigger. Yeah, they're good. Yeah, so yeah, that's, that's a big deal back too. then. She's a, yeah, she was giant. She's giant. And we've seen little movies done about that that big girl that picked on the little boy. You know what I mean? Yeah. That was, you know, but. That's kind of, I read about you helping, <laughs> bu uh, fighting bullies for people. I was always a bully. I was a, always a bully beater. Yeah. And and because of that, it's, it's funny. So when Militich asked me to join his team, or when he says, hey, if you, we got a spot for you if you want it. It's just gonna be above Robbie Lawler and Matt Hughes at 185. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I'm I'm actually smaller than both those dudes. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, Robbie was and, thick back in the yeah, day. Yeah, and so was Matt. They both walked around at 185, and I walked around at like 181, like like soaking wet. And but I fought at 185, and but they were both 170 pound monsters. You know what I mean? They obviously they wrote the book uh, and, and wrote history in those divisions. 
But um, so you didn't cut a lot of weight from what I, I mean, from what I know, I know you, you, you were one of the few that kind of fought close to their natural weight. Yeah. I mean, back, I mean, that's when I, again, being from Winchester, we were right next to Somerville, Somerville, Massachusetts, right in between Boston is, and Winchester was Somerville, Medford, Malden, Somerville, and there was the powerhouse gym. So we used to have, you know, Kevin Lavroni, Randy, the Macho Man Savage, all the pro wrestlers come in there and train for their WWE, well, WWF back in the day. Yeah. And um, and then you'd have all the bodybuilders train there. I saw some scraps with, like, Quadzilla, Paul DeMeo, and some of these guys, Randy, Macho Man, Savage, shoving each other at the juice bar and shit like that. Oh, what happened over there? I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> but then I'd be over there, and I remember one time uh, the Iron Sheik came over, and he's like, bro, do it like this, because I was bench pressing, and I needed a spot. And he's like, take two plates off. And he's like, do it like this. I'm like, okay, and fix your form. I'm like, oh, fuck, okay. But, like, I was watching the Masters, like, wherever we were. But that was back in, like, you know. Bodybuilding was, people don't realize it now. I mean, they kind of think it's big now. And it's kind of big. Shout out to Flex, friends of Flex Lewis. He's, he's the man. Yep. Dragon's Lair. Go to Dragon's Lair. But I got to say, back in the day when I was growing up, they were, they were so much, they were, like, superheroes. I yep. remember having the encyclopedia of uh, bodybuilding by Arnold Schwarzenegger. I, I had it, of course. I grew. I I'm been friends with Rich Gaspari, yeah. close friends the last yeah. 13 years. Yeah. Awesome. But they were. Ju- it was just like icon icons back then. It was like it, it, they were all movie stars. And now I'm not saying it, that it's not as big, but like bodybuilding was like the UFC right. back then. Like I couldn't tell you one female bodybuilder now. But back in, in our day, remember Len, Linda Murray? Yep. And and I mean, she was uh, on like twelve covers. I mean, they're they're the they're the girls back then, the guys back then. That was Arnold's age, and you know, and, and Kevin Lavroni and all these guys, um, Lee Priest, Lee Priest. You know, these guys. It was just it was they were like you said, they were superheroes. So that was why I filled that spot is because I was literally probably a fifty five. I wrestled fifty five in high school, and. Um, I wrestled. I, I I kicked box at 168, which is super middleweight in boxing, and I went to militant. I fought at 185 in my first UFC, UFC 14. It's because we wanted to look great. We wanted to have. I wanted to look like those dudes. So even though I wanted to be a fighter and be a kickboxer and boxer and a fighter, I was like, so it looks sweet. You know what I mean? So I was living. I was eating my Myoplex, my 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 um. What's the other one? Nitro Tech. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All of it. My, my Anderson doing poppers with Mark McGuire was hitting home runs. That was the, with, best, with the, with the best baseball that, days, too. I, know, I, know. I went to Cal Ripken's last game uh, in, uh, I think it was, they, I think they played the Yankees. No, no, it was a home game. I went to, and we stayed at the Marriott, and that's where they were all staying. Yeah, I got yeah. a ball. My dad yeah. has a ball. For Hell me. yeah. Those are the days, man. I'm not too excited about it. I mean, I, I love what's going on yeah. in the world, but I'm also real disappointed. Can you talk about, like, did you go find a gym, and then like you were like, I'm, someone said, "Hey, you're real good at this. I see potential." Or are you just like a dog, and it it kept you out of trouble? I was I was uh, right at 89, 1989, I graduated high school. My parents said, "Get a get a job or 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 go to the service." And I wanted to go to West Point, and I wanted to be in the, I wanted to be in the battle. That's when the Persian Gulf War was about to start, yeah. and I said I want to be in it. And my mom goes, nah, let's not let's not practice for war. Let's, let's yeah, they you, all say that. <laughs> let's get let's get you doing something. And the Coast Guard, you can save lives. So I, I went and became a rescue swimmer. And blah blah blah. So that's hard. I've only met one person ever with a scuba bubble. Yeah. That they get to wear. If yeah. you don't know what the scuba bubble is, they literally kill you to get it. Yeah. You, no, I was not. I was not at that yeah, level. They I drown get, you, I think. Yeah. Completely. No, that's that's insane. That's beyond like what they show on the Kevin Costner movie. <laughs> You know, no, for, Under for real, for real, with with the Ashton Kutcher too. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It, it's 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 uh, it, it's it's different. Uh, I was I was an onboard rescue swimmer, which means I was the guy who trained. To, I jumped out of the helicopter a couple of times in drill mode. We had a helicopter on board, so I was on a two seventy foot, two hundred seventy foot medium endurance cutter called the Tahoma out of New Bedford, Massachusetts. So I was like an hour away from my house, so I could still. I had a girlfriend at the time. I could run back and forth and hang out with my buddies and stuff like that. That's cool. You know, a couple a couple of days a week, but for the most part, we're working from six a.m. to yeah. you know to 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 two p.m. in the afternoon, and you're hanging out, you know, shipboard or locally, you know, trying not to get in fights locally in New, in New Bedford. Yeah, New Bedford's where they had the <laughs> remember the Jodie Foster movie, the Big Dan's, the Big Dan's. Uh, look up this movie, the Big Dan's. Um, 
Was it The Accused with Jodie Foster? The I'm gonna Accused? Look, I'm going to watch it tonight. The Accused, it was a Big Dance rape trial. Okay. And that was right, like, we actually went to the bar a couple of times. Not that that's the thing. No, but that, that's military. That's what we do. But, I was a young it, private it, once. Not that's what we do. I'm just saying we, we, but that's what we went to well, the We bar. go to the bars we and we get into pool, fights. But it happened to be right. Yeah, it, it, was, cra- it was crazy. We, we, with the local Portuguese fishermen, stuff like that. Yeah. And the Coast Guard guys being there. So and you were in the barracks? How did no, that work for the Coast Guard? I, I, we had no barracks there. The new, was, I was on the New Bedford State Pier. So we were right next to Cape Cod, but we were in New Bedford, Mass. And we were on the State Pier with all the fishermen docks. I know where that's. I used to go to Cape Cod every summer growing mm-hmm. up, and we, and we yeah. lived on where we lived shipboard. Cape so Cod. So I was going home to visit my parents. My parents said, "Well, get your car if you go if you go to the military. If not, you gotta get your own fucking job." And <laughs> but I wasn't gonna. I had a couple of buddies that you know a couple of years ahead of me that worked in the local gas station, which is fine. But, but their parents also owned it. Yeah. They, they probably own it now too. Well, offshore was a lot of money. You know I mean? Crabbing there too, right? Like uh, going out on the boats for four weeks. And for stuff. sure, for it's sure, a lot of money. Yeah, it was, it was. And then I got hazardous duty pay because I worked with the helicopters and stuff like that. So that's awesome. I have okay. an air, air assault pin right here. Back in the day, I was attached to the 101st uh, Airborne oh, hell when yeah. I was in Iraq. Hell yeah, yeah. That's all. so. Yeah, you're, it's it's like it's like 17 different levels. You're above than what. No, I was just a regular guy. Did, Everyone says they're special me. forces, but they're all full of shit. Stolen valor, bastards. I tell people, like, be happy. I'm not going to say who, but there's a champion who's currently holding a belt in uh, for, for power slap. I'm not going to say his name. Friend of mine. And uh, I said, man, are you a vet? And he said, kind of. You know, he got medically discharged early in his career. Mm-hmm. Like, I think right after boot camp. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, you, you are a veteran. I don't care if you got hurt and discharged. You put your hand up into the cost and the amount of your life. Like everyone else, yeah, yeah, you put your hand up and swore to the Constitution of the United States of America to protect it against all enemies, foreign and domestic, period. Some people go on a different path. Some give the ultimate sacrifice. Just because you got hurt early in your career and got discharged does not mean you are any less than any other vet. Yeah. And uh, I try to preach that because a lot of people downplay their service. Like, I was just in the Air Force for three years. And I'm like, no, you were part of the best military this world's ever seen. Be proud of that. Walk with your head high and your shoulders out. So many of us come home. Thank thank you for that. You know how many veterans come home and they're depressed and they play the victim and they just blame everything on the military. The military that gave you the attributes and the toolkit to be successful anywhere in life, yeah, the discipline. Yeah. To not be a piece of shit in the rest of your life, basically. Yeah. But they forget. So many veterans come home and they forget who the hell they are. And I was one. I fell to drugs and my allowed. You know, I played the victim for a long time. But once I, I remembered who the fuck I was, the world reopened up for me, man. And, I, and yeah. I'm still struggling. We're still like trying to figure out where we're gonna go. Um, but I'm I'm happy. I'm at peace. And there's just that's why I wear 22 a day on my yeah, uh, yeah. on my wrist. Yeah. But that's awesome. How was boot camp? Did you where'd you go to boot camp? Was it there? Yeah, Cape May, New Jersey. Yeah, Cape May. We actually uh, like like a couple of days. We had that like one week before graduation. Um, it was it was only eight weeks. Well, I say only now, well, eight weeks, and um, the seventh week we were at the beach at Cape May, New Jersey, and uh, a lady was drowning, and me and a couple of dudes fucking pulled her out of the water. Wow. And we were fucking recruits at the. Co- it was like, this is our calling, this is our calling. It was insane. It was we were like, yeah. It was magical for me. For me, I thought that was the coolest thing ever. So then they asked me to stay on base to be an instructor right out of boot camp. That's awesome. I won all the performance fitness awards. All I won, I broke every record, and they asked me to stay and be a physical fitness instructor and a boot camp instructor here for. As a recruit, I was I was like as a seaman, which is like yeah unheard of. They said you'd be the first one, and I said no, I want to go yeah, get I wanna, on. Bo- I want to be. A, I want to do sea duty and do do my thing. Damn. So you know did I mean? you uh, use your? Did you get GI Bill back then? I did. I did. I did two years at Northeastern University, and uh, God dang it, I was uh, uh, three three credits away from getting my associate's degree in criminal justice and sociology, and I was just like. I was already, I, I knew I wasn't going to use it. I, I, at that point, decided I did not want to be the man. I did not want to be a police officer. And I, I, I don't regret it. Um, but I said, I, but at that time, we're also, I was also in that mode of, like, 
Marshall, there was a sitcom, Marshall Law, with Sammo Hung, Jackie Chan's old partner, and these guys. It's all Chuck Norris and, and these guys being cops and fighting with their hands and yeah, I remember watching upholding Texas the law Ranger. with their fucking yeah. Like you can't do that, but but I want to do that. So I said, well, I'll I'll train them instead. So I because I fell in love with competing. I wanted to be fighter. I was an amateur kickboxer at the time while I was going to school, and um, and that time I was in the Coast Guard Reserve. I got out of my my um active active duty, so I was doing another six years reserve duty, and um, and I, and I was competing in kickboxing. And I said, dude, I I want to be a fighter. So I I. Just stop, stop going to school, man. Yeah, hey, I was there. I, I, I've, I've gone to almost the end with my GI Bill too, and then walked away. Yeah, but uh, you know, it was it was a necessity, especially during COVID, because they paid me the, the housing allowance. You know, so it kept me afloat. Copy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I got yeah. five grand a month. Oh, right on. Going to uh, the uh, San Francisco Film School. So oh, hell yeah, yeah, it worked out. Yeah. So y- this whole time you've been competing. When does when do you, when do things start clicking? When do you? get into a team and really start dialing it in. I went I went down I went down like in the in the early well I got out of the Coast Guard active in in 92 and then I had another 6 years of 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 reserve duty. And uh and I started doing some low budget films with um with Michael De Pasquale Jr. and Joe Lewis and Keith Hackney and those guys um in in New Jersey and 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 uh and like and they were we were in uh Nanuet, New Jer- Nanuet, New York. I lived in. And I drove over the line to 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 River River Rivervale, New Jersey. River Riverdale, Rivervale. I think River, it's Riverdale. River, River Rivervale, Rivervale. What's that? I think yeah. it's Riverdale. Yep. And um. And and um. Uh, my my you know uh, unfortunately um sensei his, him and his father both passed away. I trained with them for fifteen years. And these two guys, in Japanese jujitsu. So it's judo. But, but like fighting style judo, like judo being, with submissions. Yeah, yeah, you being punched, kicked, and it's basically the Japanese style where where the Gracie system broke it down. The Brazilian Jiu Jitsu broke the separated the two things. Gotcha. Basically, and um, so I trained in the combat system and the traditional system and both that you know for years. And I worked for that was when Karate International magazine and those things were out. And um, and I was I was a write editor for Karate International. I had my own little column on breaking down the fights and stuff like that. So that's when AOL, America Online, right? I, 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 yeah, I, I was in, <laughs> and like, you can actually see me in UFC number eight, like online. Back then I could type my hands, I don't even fucking do that anymore. But I was like typing online, online chat room. Oh wow. On UFC eight. And I was watching uh, Car Uno and Jens Pulver fight. And I was like, these guys are fucking amazing. I'm like, these guys, and I'm just, I'm watching all this stuff and writing articles for the magazine. And then as this is going on, we're doing some low budget films and Michael DePasquale is telling the UFC he's doing the, the refereeing and the judging. He says, I have a guy. He's, he's the hybrid. This kid's a kickboxer. He's a karate guy, but I'm training him in jujitsu. Unfortunately, it wasn't like ground grappling. It wasn't Nawaza. It yeah. was, it was. It's trained. evolved though. Back it, then it didn't exist really. Yeah. Well, with only, only, only Hoist, only the Gracies did it. Only only in the two grapplers and Frank Shamrock and those guys really could grapple. I couldn't. I was a transition guy. I'll fucking put you there. I'll throw. I'll box you, kickbox you. If you touch me, I'm gonna throw you and put you there. Take you down because I'm a wrestler. But when we get there, I wasn't the best on the mat. I had transitional submissions. So I could catch him guillotine on the way down. I knew what jujigatamis and armbars and kimuras and udigarames were, things like that. But I wasn't a. Uh, I couldn't. I couldn't roll with you like that. That's why in UFC 14, Kevin Jackson took my back in 52 seconds. I was going, holy shit, what just happened? Well, this wrestler also knows how to really, really move. I was a, yeah, high, school, I was a high school wrestler. You know what I mean? That These guys were some of the best and the best at this sport that we're trying to see. Hey, let me see if I can test my shit against your shit. It <laughs> doesn't work like that because I'm doing kind of like, I don't want, I'm not, not like, I'm, I mean, honestly, it's a lot of what we train in traditional martial arts is what, you see on the McDojo, the McDojo Instagrams now. You know what I mean? Yep. It's, I'll tell you, come to me, I'll tell you what works and what doesn't work. If you're a Taekwondo guy, if you're a karate guy, if you're a Hapkido guy, if you're a wrestler, I'll, and I'll, and I, and I, uh, honestly, pretty much every style, I'll tell you what works is going to work for you in a real fight. 
That, like fi- that's like that's my gift to the world now. Well, you because you've done it. Yeah, and I've done every style and I understand every style, and now I'm I'm at the level of 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 each of those styles. You know what I mean? I'm, I was like a belt hunter my whole career for 40 years. I started when I was 12. You know, I'm 52. You, you, you know what I mean? So it's like this actually, yeah, it's my 40th year anniversary of, of martial arts right now. So it's like, but it's in every style, really, really delved in, especially my weak styles. I feel like people go, oh my God, where'd you rest in college? I'm like, oh, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate I, it. <laughs> I, I, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. But these guys kicked my ass so much. And then you become a better student. And that's why I felt, and to not have the pressure of fighting, you become such a good student of the game again. You know what I mean? It's just weird, you know? And that's why you always tell your students, get in shape before training camp so they can only absorb what we're working for your just particular engagement, that one encounter on fight night. Because the training camp and all that stuff is just getting in shape. The absorbing and learning to be a martial arts and stuff, that's in between the fights. That's yeah, in between. You got to always just... Just, just sponge it up and just delve into all of it. Be a better boxer. Put on your boxing shoes for, for three months. If you don't fight, put your boxing shoes on for three months. And most be the most unbelievable. Be a be pro boxing level the next time I talk to you. Be pro grad. Take your don't take your gi off for the next two months until I see you again. What do you do think you know about I mean? like, these fighters that blow up right after fights and then their whole training camp is just getting weight down and. It's just what do you? Because they, 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 they all they all they all they all leave me. They all they all leave me. Because you guys didn't do it back no, then. You were fault. always in shape. No, it's my fault now. Because then when they come to camp, then when I treat them the way I treat them, it's my fault. Oh, of course, victim. it's my fault. And they go, hold on, hold on, hold. On. Especially now with these kids, they don't do what we do. And I was hoping you'd ask me something about that because the lights would be getting shut off in the gym and coach Pat Militich would come around the corner and go, what the fuck is that over there? Tony, Tony's it. And I'd be in the shadows crying behind a bag, like just kind of just like, or my head between my knees is kind of just fucking pity, pity, fucking whatever, wanting to be perfect. He goes, you shut the lights off. I need one more hour. And you go, don't, he goes, dude, you're good. You worked an hour, everyone else out of the shower. That was an hour since they'd been out of the shower. Everyone had a smoothie at the gym because we had a, a gold gym, beautiful gym. And we'd get a shake after you shower. And then we'd go do whatever, watch a movie or something like that and go play play shades with Robbie Lawler, all these guys. And I'd still be down there wanting to do more reps because I wasn't the best because I can't be because I'm going against Matt and Robbie and Jeremy Horn and Jason Black and Pat himself and the Jens Pulver and the best guys. Everyone on my team is in the Hall of Fame, I think, right now. You know what I mean? The, the, I think you're right. The, the majority of them. Do you know what I mean? Except for the guys that retired a little earlier and stuff like that. You know what I mean? And it's just like, uh, yeah, man. It's it's, it's, it's a never-ending uh, battle with our own minds, right? Yeah, oh, of course. It, it always was. But for those kids that says, you know, we were there willing to put in the shin kicks. We had the Makawara board to rip your shins against. We would do there, kick me in the belly, I'll kick you in the belly, and go back and forth. And, do these. and the kids right now... The whole thing is, let me get in my ice plunge that I just bought. But that's cool. I don't care if you took your cold plunge, because my foot's still gonna penetrate your abdomen because you have no shields. You have no, you have no shields. Like we just think like the old, uh, I think it was the old Michael Keaton Batman, when he walked away, he goes, he goes shields. Might have been the Val Kilmer one, and he goes, and the and the Batmobile, and the shields went up over the. Like that's how you want, like your abs to flex, you know, like, like so on impact or impact or even when you hit, they flash and they flex. But you're like, but the kids don't train that way. They don't train like, I'll just say like traditional Kyokushin style. Like we need all those elements of martial arts. And the athletes now they want to get their cold plunge. They want to run back to the PI and get their fucking their ortho, which is awesome. Get it. But let's can can we finish training? Oh no, because your girlfriend's waiting for you. And she wants to go down to the cafe. She's already in the cafe. She got you. She already texts you. Our two meals are waiting, babe. And she she actually screenshotted it sitting on the table for you. I've been to the PI. That's why my last two fucking UFC athletes broke up with me because their fucking girlfriends broke up with me and caused them to break up with me. So what? Yeah, I Do think there's it's a big ridiculous. change. I think, and not just with fighting. I think everybody just and it's kind of it's too much. F- funny to say because I'm sitting here on a show. Hoping it gets views and clicks. Um, I think that the whole world is just trying to get to the the finish line without putting in the work. Oh my God, you nailed it. That's it, hundred percent. Yo, in the whole world, like I said, the whole world, not just fighting. 
not but the whole world. Everything we're talking about, the schooling, everything that's get I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. Now you're gonna get me walking into, into my Fox News, and uh, and I used to hate it. I used to wake up in the morning, my dad would already have it on. Same. And that <laughs> shit would, and I you said that, and it used to be this like numbing, and it's numbing again since the pandemic. But I didn't get into it till the pandemic. And now I can't stop it. It's like this bad movie that I can't look away from. It's like a car crash. Have Have you watched Fox News, Dad? Like That's Shane, all I watch. Uh, no, no. Whole... There's a There's a com a comic named Shane Gillis, oh. and he does a Fox News Dad bit. And I swear to oh, God, no, it's literally it my father to the T. I I haven't laughed. I mean, Shane Gillis is. I'm a big fan. I, I listen to all his stuff. That That guy's the absolute man. He's from uh, from PA. But the Fox News Dad is. I'll, I'll send it to you. I'll yeah, I, I got to get this guy. And, so. I think, and I'm gonna I'm gonna stay on this subject. And uh, I'm not in there. I'm not fighting. But I, I was in combat. I've been in all, you know 400 combat patrols, and we prepped to go out there and not come home every day. And that's kind of how the fighters do. You, they they train to go out on their shield. But lately, I see so many training videos, so much pad work, and they look so good. And then they oh get in there God. and they don't fucking do anything, bro. And I'm like, why are you? You just want to get sponsors, and I know we all got to eat. I want sponsors too. But when I, when I, as a fan of the sport, who watched you guys twenty five years ago, get in there and, and and be dogs, I feel like there's no fighters left, and it's just like athletes and people that want to be bougie. No, and it bothers me. I see some awesome pad work and training, and then they get in there, and they don't throw one fucking punch. Nope. And nope. I'm like, what do you think? The disconnect is from the training to executing. <laughs> That's simple. That's simple. Well, because the people are taking, um, l like I was almost like I was saying before, myself, Pat Miletic, Ernesto Hoost, the guys that have been in the sport already that are taking these kids, the kids, uh, the Sam Grecos, these K1 fighters, the Dwayne Ludwigs, so, some people, the, uh, Dwayne, Dwayne's, a, Dwayne, Dwayne's hit it on the head, him, Duke Rufus, myself, like we have MMA programs that are, that we train our students like on a, on a certain level, um, like like to the masses, like like the like the like the mall version. It's it's not it's not it's, it's a hardcore version, but it's a structured curriculum. That's why I say the the mall version. But the the guys that don't have that, but they just want to say, hey, it's still it's still a structured version. Just do what the fuck I say today. The kids don't want to hear that, and they get they get they get they think it's like it's it's just too much for them. The the strong. Guys that have done it before, they're they're pushing these they're pushing these two these kids too hard. A lot of these kids say, "Oh, it's a career, it's a career that you didn't have, it's a career you didn't have." So now I'm gonna, so now you're gonna you're gonna take it out of me. No, I don't want to see you get hurt because I know what can happen. And right now we're doing we're doing there's a, there's it's all about your reels. How can I get my reels in on my pads? Can I get my reels in? Literally, I I, I mean. I, I love these last couple of kids. I mean, I held kids, held mitts for a couple uh, UFC kids this past month just to show them, hey, hey, I'm in the same room. You don't, you're, oh, you're taking this round off? I'll hold pads for you so you can keep up pace with these guys. They're not my students, not my athlete. Just want to show people what I can do. So I happen to be in that room at the same time. So I, the kid let me hold mitts for him, a UFC guy. A couple of guys. I just want, first thing, first thing. Hey, 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 I'm I'm ready to go with the kid. Hey, 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 hey. Get the get the camera out. Get the camera out and show this for the gram. Why? Because you're working with me? Or because I'm working with you. I appreciate it because I'm gonna show that I'm working with you because you're a UFC guy. So I'm gonna show that I'm working with you. I'm gonna, so if you post it, I won't post it, but if you post it, I'll I'll add it to my story. I you can know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, and you I, are a legend of the game, and, though. And, 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 I, is... and I love and I love the kid. Of course. Of course. I'm just saying, but I'd 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 train, rather motherfucker. I'd, 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 I'd rather the guy go train motherfucker and I go like this. Look, I'd I'd rather go. Look, I'll give you a month. I'll give you a month free of this shit if you show me you really want it, and then you can decide if you want to work together afterwards. You don't even need to bring me to your corner. I just want I want you to know that I made you better, and then let's come up with something. Yeah. You know what I mean? But that but a lot of people right now they're going with guys that are great on the stuff. They can do the flair, do the, the but have you been there? A lot of these guys haven't been hit. They they've have never been hit before. They've never been in the ring before or the cage before. They're great mid holders, but that's why if you have different people in your camps, oh this guy's this person, this guy's this person, 
But I, but I don't get that. I won't surround myself with anyone unless you've actually been to combat. It yeah. doesn't make sense to me. And I watch it because I've been in a, a bunch of street fights growing up. I'm not proud of it, but from Jersey, that's just what happened. For sure. And I don't know. I, I'm not claiming I know how to fight, but I know that I've been in some fights, and I've seen some of my friends get into some where that dog is inside of them, and I've I've been getting my fucking ass stomped, bloody, and I'm still coming, not even worried about getting hit again, just like pure I'm taking your ass out. Yep. I don't see that thing anymore. Yeah. yeah, no, that's a soldier in you, and that's that, but that's gone though. But that I mean that it's gone, and the kids that haven't, I think, are willing to go through their. At, at military fighting systems, we had we had a we had a camp ritual. We had people come. It was a revolving door, and you'd see kids in there. What happened to that dude? It's two days. And he quit. <laughs> oh, he's gone. And it was it was it was the norm though. It was the norm, so you wouldn't become attached to too many people. It's unfortunate though, because yeah. at that level, and you've been at the highest level for many years. Just stopped in 2013, right? Yeah. You guys, you know what it takes. I used to tell my soldiers, we're not fucking going to Disney World. Yeah. Because, I mean, yeah. I had a soldier. I got blown up, and uh, I was taken to the hospital. Thankfully, no one died that night. But we got hit pretty hard. So, on like in a training for a roadside bomb, I take it real serious. You know, I lost a lot of friends to IEDs, and I almost died. And then when we're in training, and they're just standing up in the, t in the gun, just playing around, not taking cover. I mean, I had one kid, uh, I chewed him out so bad, I made him write a letter home to his parents that he died and read it to us, the whole platoon. Because right I take that Good. shit serious. Good for you, fuck yeah. I don't, I'm not, but you said the reels. I see the pad work and I get excited and, and I'm like, damn, I can't wait for this fight. And they go in there and it's just no. well, fucking well, deers because, in the headlights. Because they're not, it's, they're, they're, also, they're not realistic combinations. It's, it's, no one's, it's, these pad work, the people they got their feet sucked in the da 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 and and some of these pad holders, they're now doing new movies. I'm not we're not saying names, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you're like, dang, that person's blowing up. But and but it's ninety percent of the time it's the athlete. These guys can hold mitts and do all shit. The athletes gotta go in there and perform. Some of these athletes can translate it regardless of how cool their mitts are, whatever. They can still go, okay, I really gotta fight. And I, I, I know these are reflexes, you know what I mean? Sean I mean, Strickland, perfect example. It, exactly. All he does is fucking fight. Yeah, he doesn't sit there and hit mitts all day long, all day long. I know Eric and those guys get yeah, ready Eric's and all boy. that stuff. But, it's, but they don't sit there and live on that. He wants to live on, Sparring. I, I want to feel what I'm feeling and what I'm going to feel. So the fake version is something that throws some people off. The dog version, what we're talking about, is is what's real about it. And you got to be able to punch, shoot. That's why, like, with, with my... I think it's one of the reasons I try and stay in shape is because I well I know it is because I know at any time if we're doing MMA I tell all my guys just know I may shoot on you anytime anytime we're doing mitts like anytime I may attack you back I may punch you kick you or shoot on you back I may just clinch you high crotch you like Daniel Cormier and, and take you down but be ready for it. when that happens I want you to get back, respond to that and I've had some people go wow this is a, but I've also had you know. You know, single people go just with me and like one other high school wrestler kid that doesn't even fight MMA, but I need him as a partner three days a week, two or three days a week to be this person, partner. I've gotten guys to the UFC and to Bellator just with us, just with doing our version of Mitz, me being your best partner because I'm a you guys 100, 170, he's a one, he's a bantamweight, so I can get these guys to the show. And you know what I mean? We don't need a big team, a room of people that aren't pulling the trigger on each other. At Militich, we had three different training partners, you know, because there's 15 guys in the room, maybe nine guys in the room that morning, but they're the best guys in, on, in the world right now in the UFC. So if we turned around, the next round was brutal. So you had no real, no matter whether it's Jens Pulver's still 20 pounds lighter than me, I better not get knocked out this next round because Jens Pulver is with me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it was, it was terrible no matter where you look. Nowadays, you get rooms of 40 people or, excuse me, 20 people five different managers all sitting there drinking coffee, enjoying the fact that they're watching their stable of roosters, but they're all dicking around together, kind of messing around, or they'll lull each other to sleep so much, and then one person will throw something hard and then someone gets mad. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So like, what are we doing? And then the boxing world goes too hard. Do you mean the boxing world can't work together? Do you know what I mean? So, cause I'm at a boxing gym right now, we're at ISC over the International Sports Center, but these guys, it's just, uh, the, the, the mix of the wrestling, the, the, the karate style structure, 
everything needs to blend properly, but you gotta have the reality of uh of what's gonna happen in, 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 in the in the combat situation, like you're saying. It's a real fight. It's a real fight. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad that we, we touched on that because it's uh you know, and I'm sitting here as a hypocrite, but I'd get in there. I've been calling any MMA journalist that has a podcast, I will fight you. Just give me six weeks. I'm out of shape. What with the celebrity boxing? That's it. That's the thing. I'll, I'll scrap with any one of you. Heavyweight down to whatever. And I mean that. I'll fight any one of you motherfuckers. Do you have, what, uh, do you have a background? In it? I mean, do you have uh, military Taekwondo, oh. fourth degree red belt. Um, I competed in uh, jiu-jitsu grappling tournaments in Iraq oh, right on. at 170. Um, oh, you ready to fucking go? Yeah, I can I can throw down. Yeah, yeah. And I get I get I got I just I have that I have that thing in me. Hell yeah. You know, I always have Hell yeah. which I've toned down. I don't want to fight an old lady in a Walmart parking lot anymore, you know. <laughs> for, you sure, know? <laughs> for sure, for sure, for sure. Cuz no, when I get mad I miss, I miss I would Christmas. Love, <laughs> we got to do that. Honestly, I would I would uh Something's been missing a lot and I think it's I've been talking to my wife about maybe getting back into being a police officer or really? you know, I was military police uh, and then yep, I yep. then I was a contractor. Yep. That's what I did in the Coast Guard. Yep, yep. Yep, yep. And then I was a DOD uh, federal officer and then uh, I walked away in 2017 and went the GI Bill route but also went down to the the drugs and the homelessness, got in some trouble, got arrested a couple times. Uh, everything's been dismissed and I'm like something's missing and it's that it's that team spirit, that camaraderie. And I don't this have it so at much. all. Yep. And I need it. I'm out yep. here. Uh, it's my wife. I have a nine month old, and she's from California. I'm from Jersey. We don't really yep. have a circle. I think that's why Mark, Marcus and I get along. Right. That's why I was looking at my phone. I hope you didn't feel this. Should be. Marcus has been FaceTiming me. No, <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, that, well, me, Marcus, and I like like I need Marcus. Marcus needs me. And you know what happened to his Achilles? Yeah. And we're getting ready for celebrity boxing. And, and you know, can we call on, him? Let's on, call him. Honestly, yeah. I mean, honestly. <laughs> He's gonna figure that out. We're gonna get his, we're gonna get his body healed up. He needs to let himself heal first. For sure, Crazy for bastard. sure. Yeah, he Facetime like. A couple I think times. we went from about zero to a hundred on that one, but but that was a little better shape than he was on that one. If this fool don't answer, he's not gonna answer this guy. He's in the background. If he us. don't answer you, then I'm gonna take you up on that fight. Me and Bobby gonna fight. <laughs> yeah, I had a bunch of missed calls. And now he doesn't want to answer. Orale. I got his coach sitting here, his little bro. Yeah, now man. I'm sitting here. Your little brother and your coach calling you. You know what I mean? Man, answer. Marcus. All right. You Boo, missed it. Marcus. I'll leave it there. But yeah, that's unfortunate. How, that's not a very normal injury. Like, how do you, how did that happen? I don't, I don't like, like, uh, I'm a footwork guy. I'm a, you gotta be able to jump rope a little bit, do all that shit. But at the same time, when you're over forty and you haven't been working out a whole lot, you're trying to have a guy do three rounds of jump rope and then <laughs> be on his toes the whole time. And he might have been drinking over the weekend. It's only Wednesday. He's a little dry and yeah, fucking snap, crackle, pop. He just turned fifty three. You know week. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's just you don't see it a lot. I know Jamal Hill. I saw him at the apex and uh, walking on crutches. Did he have that? He had to relinquish the light heavyweight belt because of it. He tore the Achilles? Yeah. No. Yeah, a few months ago. Oh, young kid like that. Playing no. basketball. Holy fuck. No, yeah. No, young, you don't think. I mean, that's like they say it's like over 35. And so all my clients, everyone like over 30, like we're, we go really, really mellow. And I just think um, we, you know, three weeks into it, we were already, Marcus was getting sweet. He started a box. He's getting his groove on. We're talking about possible opponents. All that testosterone. For celebrity boxing. <laughs> all that testosterone. He might have been a little dry. And then fucking, they got a quick fucking Achilles. You're down. And then we had it going for about, he took about three weeks off. And we had him in there for a couple weeks. He was yeah, he doing, did a he was, he spar, didn't he? Uh, alive. He was doing good. He was doing good. He was doing good. Just kind of, and then he got, he got squirrely. It's his top. And it went down. Oh, like mate. Someone, oh, mate. I oh, tore my Achilles. Oh, fuck. You fucking might. Yeah, and that, that was terrible. That, that was terrible. But so, I how think... does that work? Like you, your friends and him. Uh, obviously, I, I I'm a part of the MVP at Extreme Couture. I went once and I was dying during the warm up. Like I'm I'm out of shape. What's the MVP called it's again? It's the Veterans Merging Players. Okay, okay. So it's like okay, some okay. of the UFC guys will show up and train with the yep. us, us old yep, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
But I want to, I really like, I wanted to get back into a gym and traditionally train for the first time yeah. uh, with the celebrity boxing. How did you guys get in? I'm friends with, does that have anything to do with uh, Overt PJ? Uh, he owns Happy Punch. Do you know that? Uh, he's, he, I, I, I don't know. He's that. a part of Misfits I, and all the, the KSI. I, I was, I would say yes if that's who you're talking about because uh, celebrity boxing with KSI and them, but and, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to. Who is the, um, oh, he's a friend of mine. I can't believe Big guy. He was on Dr. Phil. How am I missing his name? Mafia. His name is in the Mafia. Heavy dude. He was going to fight. And then uh, I think he does that. Chuck celebrity. Zito? No. 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 Older. Or young, say, younger say, kid. Like, Chuck Zito, yeah. <laughs> so you, uh, they contact you and see if you have fighters? Well, well, no. They uh, Marcus is really close with the guy. So Marcus is close with, with Damon, the owner. And uh, his brother owns uh, BKFC, the Bare Knuckle. Oh, I met those. Yeah, I met those guys. Yeah. So the so one owns Celebrity Boxing, the other owns uh, BKFC. And uh, Marcus has. They wanted him to get going. He actually did a small thing with Paulie Malinaji. And uh, I actually, uh, I, that's that's what we were kind of getting ready for. Then they wanted the for him the, and Paulie. The, then I told him, then I'm going to tell, tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. Then he said, well, they want me to deal with the uh, the Logan Paul look like that Nate Diaz choked out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He follows me. I'm going to get him on the show. Hopefully. So we're trying to, so we're trying to do, we we're trying to do that one. And I said, just whatever, just make, make it work for another. But he goes, would you like to do it? Mark has asked me as a hundred percent. I go, but if I do it, I would like to do it against someone that, because I was, you do it. Because You'll I, kill these yeah, guys. Because, well, I, well, I was training partners with Bernard Hopkins and, some really skilled. So I was in training camps with some really high level boxers my day. That's why I took on guys like Anderson Silva and Kung Lee because we figured we were gonna knock them out. You would have as to crazy fight. As that a, sounds, you know what I mean? But it, like, it doesn't. You're you know? you're a dog. But like, we're like, I I mean, I, you know, if, if I didn't get caught with that elbow, knock on wood, like we think we're still gonna outbox Anderson. Sure, get him on the inside, like Frazier and Ali, things shit like that. Whatever yeah. you're gonna do. But um, but no, I've, I've been at that level of boxing my whole life, and I and it's it's. It's my underlying story in my MMA. So that's I always wanted to let my hands go. So even when my knees were hurt, my legs were bad, I couldn't do what I wanted to do, kickboxing wise or even wrestling wise, being able to shoot. I go, if you come near me, I'm probably gonna be able to knock you out anyway. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, I tore my my leg, my tore my ACL and MCL three weeks out from Kung Lee, and I just hopped it up on steroids and, and cortisone, and taped that fucker up, and we were ready to go for the fight. I couldn't shoot or kick. But you, but you, you know, were there, but, still but you're like, but the, and it's almost kind of a sitting duck against one of the best strikers in the world. But that sucks, yeah. But what are you gonna do? But but my point is like, I I said, I I, I want. My point was I always gone against the Andersons, the Dwayne Ludwigs, the Kung Lees, the best guys. I fought for their titles. Fought for four titles. The camera short every time. I was always a short notice guy. They called eight other dudes before me. At six days out, two herniated discs. Yeah, I'll come in and try, because. I'm, I'm that guy. Yeah, fuck. Yeah. Because I, I, I still think I'm gonna fucking win, motherfucker. Yep. But, so, <laughs> but, but like, so, so, and I think it's also one of the reasons why I still keep training. I'm getting retired and now I'm better than I was 20 years ago. But I've guys, my teammates, and some guys that I love to death, but I know a lot of my friends and my peers that don't train it anymore at all. Yeah. Be, because they retired and they went back into their civilian lives, as I call them. You know what I mean? But for me, it's, but they also were, Champions. Half these guys I'm talking about were fucking champions. I never got to that. You top. were there, but, uh, but I'm multiple never, times. Never, so I have these illusions of grandeur. So I need to keep pursuing this. So like, if I was to do a celebrity boxing, would I want to fight some guy, or would I want to fight the a Malinaji? You yeah. know, I would want to do something good with Paul Malinaji. I can see you for, fighting Malinaji, for, not for, Marcus, for four three-minute rounds, like a really good fight, something like that, and say, Paul, let's 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 make it look. Let's let's. Like I'm cool with getting after it if you want to get after it, and you know you're probably a better boxer than me, but I'm, I fucking don't suck, dude. I'm re I can fucking yeah. box. You're gonna know and I, I was and there. I, and at one <laughs> and at one sixty five, I can fucking box. Like at me at one fifty five, I'm a different animal. I fought as a bodybuilder. Remember, I was an eighty five er. You were jacked. I was jacked. You shouldn't even bend that <laughs> heavy. My club. Your, you had the 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 hair dyed and everything. I loved it. I loved yeah. it. I loved See, it. I, I think shaved my. It was so you fun. had the uh, the, it was so the fun. bleached hair before Tito. Yeah, these fuckers. Yeah, they all yeah, copy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You were the first one with the bleached hair, 
And then you had the bleached mohawk for yep. a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. That, yep. That's way back. Dang. A man. lot of people don't know that. They just they know of the Tito. Yeah. But yeah, but even before Tito. I got that a lot. Hey, Tito Ortiz, especially when I was tan all the yeah. time. Tito, I'd be like, oh, no. Yeah. And my teammates would go, dude, he's way smaller than Tito. I'd go, thanks a lot, Matt. Yeah, Tito's like 6'5 or something. Six yeah. Four. Yeah, he's huge. So, how would you go about that? Uh, do you think. I think that's a great idea, man. I, I, well, I want Marcus to get. I want Marcus to talk to them, and and I know he's been. I know he speaks to him, you know, once a week at least because they're gonna be on the podcast again, the two brothers. But I love him. I love to say get my coach on there. I love to fight someone like Malinaji or like a Roy Jones, someone really good because I'll, I'll put it on a show against these guys, like for real. Like again, I said I've been in the ring with B Hop already. If B Hop wants to do it with me. I was a sparring partner with Bernard Hopkins. I'll do it with B-Hop if he wants to get back in there. The alien can do one more with me. You heard it here on Fight Junkies. Let's go, Celebrity Boxing. Yeah, Let's hell make yeah. make something happen. Yeah, I was getting ready for Kung Lee, and um, I was a sparring partner of his, and he rocked me with a left hook in, like, the fourth round. And we are supposed to do, like, six rounds of sparring that day. They go, how you doing, Tone? And I go, uh, mm. I think I'm good. They're like, what's the matter? And I, I walked up to his corner. I go, I'm kind of fucked up. That, that last shot rocked me. And I go, and they go, you good? I go, I, I got to fight Kung Lee in three weeks. I'm kind of fucking. Yeah, let me slow down. That one. They go, yeah, okay, we're good. They went, we're good. And they brought in the next guy. Do you know what I mean? Gotcha. But because they try and keep the best guy going as long as he can go. And yeah. I, and, I'm, and I was the fucking My best, best guy, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. and, that's what he's, and, that, and, that's, and that's what he's getting ready for Jermaine Taylor. Do you know what I mean? And Jermaine Taylor doesn't suck. So they thought I was like good like Jermaine Taylor good. So they were going to use me for a six-week training camp to get my ass to get him ready for. So I'm like, what's up? So that's how good I can box. That's awesome. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm like, Anderson Silva, I'll fucking kill you, bro. Like, let's box. Like, And then he elbowed me. I was, you cheated. Would so you, you, know, you know what I mean? But you get that mindset. No, no I, it's all good. You and Anderson Silva no, should run it back in boxing. Yeah, no, but you know what I mean? I actually thought about that. We could do that. We, we really could do that. When was and, that? And that I could talk myself into winning that fight again, too. Four, so that was 2006. So uh, I could talk myself into winning that fight again, but he's so, so big. And I'm literally 168 pounds soaking wet right now. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I, I walk around at 170. And Anderson's walking around over 200 right now, over. They're just so big. Yeah, he's a big boy. You know what I mean? And nowadays, it's like that's why I know Malinaji. If he's that big, it's because he shouldn't be that big. You know what I mean? And he could cut down to one seventy or one sixty-five, no problem. Because Polly, how big are you right now? You being fatty, bumbleaddy right now? One eighty-five, Polly. What are you weighing <laughs> right now, Polly? You know what I mean? We uh we got five minutes, but I have to ask you this. I, I, it's kind of personal. I wasn't going to bring it up. No, no. But uh, there was a documentary recently on someone that yeah, you were yeah. friends with. Um who was, I believe, one of the most legit gangsters in the fight game mm, mm. Um, from the UK. Can you, can you talk a little bit about, you know, uh, your, your friend? Was it Lee Murray? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they, God bless him. Um, man, I, uh, <clears throat> he's got another, uh, I think, 11. Well, it's been like, yeah, since the documentary has been a few. So I think it's another 11 years left on his, on his sentence, which is bullshit because the other kids are home. Yeah. Do you know, they already, they already, um, got extradited, they're back in the UK, and they've been released. You know, um, a friend of mine, Paul Allen, he's released. Unfortunately, he's a wheelchair. He got some other issues after after that situation went on. He had some some of his own issues going on, and he's a wheelchair. But I communicate with him. I communicate with Lee Lee's um, wife and his and his daughter. And um, he's doing uh, okay. They're they're doing well. But yeah, they speak to him frequently, and um, you know, they just asked me, you know, not to. See, a lot of people so want to know just, about that. Per I just, I, I, I ask because, like I said, I lost myself post-military. I think a lot of fighters may be underpaid and, uh, you know, you, you go through certain things. Uh, TBI is a real thing. Like, I, I, I have TBI yeah. um, where it gives me anger outbursts, and I'm working on it. I really am. But I, 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 people look at that, and they're just, oh, they think it's cool. I look at it as like, man... How many fighters have lost themselves due to the game? Yeah. And it's yeah. unfortunate. Yeah. It's, it's it's dark and it's sad, yeah. you know? Well, that's what I mean, talking about. Like a soldier, we, we we get trained and we do our job all these years and we're the man. And then in a second, you don't fucking matter anymore. Yeah. And I yeah. feel like it's, it's yeah. similar with you guys. I always think of that, that Laird, you know, I watched that uh, surfing movie with Laird Hamilton. And he says, you know, um, 
his his wife, uh, volleyball player Gabrielle Reese, you know, and Gabby would say, uh, you know, it's like he's a, a dragon slayer, and there's no more dragons to slay when there's no more waves. Do you know what I mean? And that's so. What do I do now? You know, the, you know. So you know what I mean. If there's no more dragons, like what what's my purpose? I'm a dragon slayer. Do you know what I mean? And so I'm a fighter. I feel that fucking every day, bro. Like that's the part you just fucking crush me. Like that's the biggest part. I feel it hits too. me so hard right now. Because, dude, I'm a fucking warrior. Like, I've, my, you know, it's, what is, you know, it's, it's better to be a, a warrior in a garden than a, than a gardener in a war. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But, like, I'm a fucking warrior. And, like, I, I fucking, I deserve the right. Ken Shamrock said it, too. I deserve the right to fight. I don't care how fucking old I get. I deserve the right to fight. And if I stay in shape, I, I uphold the, the martial way, then I deserve the right to perform and put myself in a position of growth because it's always going to be growth. Do you know what I mean? No matter what, you're always going to learn from it. You're always going to get experience from it. And that's why I say, like for myself, like I, I have to be with someone real, like a Malinaji, someone legit. And I want Marcus to feel these same things. And Bob, I say, let me, let me, I'll do the same thing. Let me train you. Let's get you something for this. Make it realistic. Make it happen. For you guys, and we'll get, and Marcus will make this happen for us too. You know what I'm saying? Easy, done deal. I would love that. So, yeah, I get emotional too because I feel like it's hard not to. I feel like I'm I, every every single day. I know that there's there's troops out there getting after it. I'm like, how many lives could I save today? And I'm home, and I don't know what to do. Yeah, you know? yeah. My, uh, I'm I'm trying to do some undercover stuff right now. I don't really. I, I'm, I'm glad it didn't come up, but I'm going to bring it up, and I should I should probably just leave it. But, like, with the first responders, police, military, that was my thing. I mentioned earlier, like, I didn't I didn't ever finish my degree in criminal justice, and I wanted to be the super cop, you know what I mean? And because I went from military to that, and I wanted to be able to give back to my community. But in that case, since I can't, so I said I want to train the police, I want to train the military and teach them how to be better soldiers, better police officers, better first responders, all that. So with... So with some friends of mine, some investors, we've created a, a new rule set, a new, a new venue, a new event um, that's based on basically reality combat grappling. That's nothing to do with striking and EBI because these guys are still doing 50-50 leg positions and just slapping each other. It's not a combative position. Do you know what I mean? Um, but we, we're trying to do something that's going to be based on what can the curriculum for our police, our military, our first responders be something that can go into a worldwide stasis and use us for for good for 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 the better rather than just saying hey adopt the cop curriculum and you come over to my local BJJ spot but everyone's pulling guard because it doesn't work for police and military it's not something we would do on the battlefield it's not something we do on the sidewalk or in the bar yeah or I, to protect your family I've, I'm very passionate about this subject the training and right. the lack of and I mean so I know it's a different subject but no but I I've I've talked about it. I, I, I'm I love Tom DeBlas. He talks about it a lot too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate uh, to be in those positions. And like you said, a lot of these cops. And I used to I was a non lethal weapons uh, instructor, so I did okay. all the jujitsu and the uh, combatives and the pepper spray and the taser. Sure. And when I had especially female soldiers that probably never been hit, I whooped the fucking shit out of these girls. And they used to get, like, emotional and mad. I said, so upset. let me do it now on the soccer field yeah. in yeah. training yeah. instead of someone taking your gun and, gun and killing yeah. you with yeah. your duty weapon. Yeah. You want me to beat the fuck out of you or you want to get killed in somebody's kitchen? Yeah. Yeah. It's just unf everybody just wants to put a badge on and a uniform to look cool, yeah. and they don't know how to fucking do anything. Yeah. They don't know how to stop the bleeding. Yeah. And yeah. everybody's bleeding right now. Let bleeding. me do it here on the soccer field. So when you're on the street, this doesn't happen. You're not gonna you're not gonna go, holy shit, this is happening. Yeah. No, you've already experienced it, but hopefully you can control it now. Yeah. And that's what I was talking about before. With this with the this new style MMA, right? These new style fighters. Everyone wants to get to the goal. Well, it's because we're training with UFC fighters. All the amateurs are training with some guy that's, they're all training with Sean Strickland. They're all training with this other guy. So there's when there's 20 people on the mat, some of them are good amateurs and some of them are UFC fighters over at Extreme and at Syndicate, stuff like that. So the kids feel like I'm kind of, I, I kick it with these dudes. I go to the PI with them after training. I feel like I'm there already. You're fucking not there, dude. Do your shin conditioning. 
do your hand conditioning. You know what I mean? They're all looking to get the next massage and get their meal and get their cold plunge in their sauna, but they're not willing to get yelled at by their coach and say, get a bloody nose now? But you guys are fucking pussyfooting around and just touched it. And it's this, this play bullshit in the, in the gym, especially when they put on, oh, coach, can we do small gloves? No. Why? We're never going to do small gloves. Because when you guys do small gloves, you fucking don't even hit each other. You don't even come near each other. Meanwhile, when boxers put the gloves on, they're either bombing or not touching each other either. There's no middle ground either. At Militich, me and Robbie Lawler, Matt, he, we put fucking gloves on, and we're getting fucked up. But we could wrestle with the gloves on. Under we could do Greco. We cut the the thumb out of the boxing gloves, so you have a little bit of a lobster claw. So if someone kicked you, you could wrap it and still grab their Achilles because your thumb isn't connected to the boxing glove. We all wore 16s or at least 12s to 16s. Jens, I think, would sneak in some tens every now and then. <laughs> fucking pulver. No, I'm just kidding, Jens. I'm just kidding, Jens, Paul motherfucker. And congrats on the Hall of Fame. And <laughs> congrats, brother. Love you, brother. But uh, no. Uh, People just want to get there. They don't want to put in the work. No, and the work, and that's what we say. You, the revolving door we used to have was like that. And now there's no, there's no revolving door. Yeah. Everyone can come because it's utopia. If your coach wants to bring you there, your trainer wants to bring you there, drop them off. And I love the coaches there. I love the guys. And I love the athletes there. But I'm, But I might face you. If we're both, I'm trying to get to the top 10, bro. And if I'm like over at Extreme or Syndicate, one of these, I'm not telling them to go to the, to the lamest gym in town because there's no one else there. I get it. You're trying to train with someone on your like, your 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 same skill level. I get that. But if you're not showing me what you're showing me because you're not my actual teammate, I loved Robbie Lala. I love Matt. I love I love these. I still do. I love all these guys. I allowed them to do. I didn't want them to do it, but I allowed them to do like family only. They're the only fucking ones that could do that to me, though, on the planet. Everyone else outside that militant room would pay for my for my pain. I would fucking kill everyone because I go, no one's as good as Jens. No one's as good as Jeremy Horn. No one's as good as Jason Black or Matt Hughes or Pat Mills. No one's as good as Tim Sylvia, these guys. No one's as good as these guys or Ben Earwood or any of these guys. No one's as good as Ben Euchre or any of these guys. And, I'd, and, and I go, that's why I ran 10 and 2. A lot of guys don't run 10 and 2. Now guys get in the contender th fucking 3 and 1, 3 and 0. Oh. I mean, that's cool. I mean, lucky for them. But it's also trying to get a monopoly on a stranglehold on all, all the competition. I just want them to hold a couple of my guys, get a couple of my guys and get them in there. I'll, I'm happy to have my guys in there too. Yeah. But but we had to, there was no ultimate fighter back then. We had to fight. We had to be sweet to get in the UFC. I was, I was 10 and 2, motherfucker. I was housing people. Do you know what I mean? You know what I mean? You can't. That's hard to do. You know, and then when you're at the highest level, they start kind of win one, win a couple, lose lose one. You know, but that shit happens. But you know, but you got to get, the, you got to do the work, and to do that work, we we're putting extra hours. I was sitting in the dark, and Pat's like, "Hey, I got to turn the alarm on. Get the fuck out of here, Tony." I'm like ten more kicks, Pat, on the bag. You know what I mean? And then he live with me. Then we go eat or whatever. You know, but that's a good coach too. He knows I'm putting in the work. You got to put the work in. You know what I mean? And and and, but that's also why. He'd fly over the world with me and make sure that I was in my corner and shit like that. And I'll do the same thing for any other guy that can or girl that can put in that work for me. I think because that's I why want, I don't want to. I don't want to want it more than you. Yeah, perfectly said. I don't. If I want it more than you as the coach, well, you're in the wrong fucking room. Yep. And I it think that's a lot. That's a big reason why I think I haven't stepped in uh, on the mat again because I'm psychotic. Like. I will, I'll be literally obsessed. I, you know, I'm sober now five years. That's awesome. Congrats. Thank you. Yeah, I, I just, I have a one track mine and yeah. I go a thousand miles yeah. an hour. And I'm, you know, I'm still, I'm 37. I feel good. No injuries. Um, I'm the type to tell me, well, fuck, I, I'm going to, why not go scrap? Yeah. Why can't I go? Yeah. You know, I see yeah. guys winning belts at 42 years old. Yeah. Oh, my blood's boiling right now. I'm yeah, ready, I'm ready to go. <laughs> no, you said that about five years. You said that about five years. I know Marcus is. 53. Marcus is is is, uh, is a couple years sober now. You said. Yeah, two today. Congrats, Marcus. Yeah, two congrats, years sober Marcus. Today. And you know, that's such a it's such a big deal. I, I've had my my stints of sobriety, 
And you're like, oh, that, that's fucking amazing. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't um, I don't count days or do media. I'll still have a beer here and there. I for just, sure, for yeah, sure. I don't I, do drugs or opiates anymore. I had a pill problem for a while because uh, the VA just gives them the soldiers like sure, fucking okay. Skittles. Okay. But yeah, I haven't touched an opiate in five years. Yet. Well, I mean, I did a couple a couple of years ago. I did wildland firefighting. So like for 90 days, we're out on the out on the line and shit like that. I'm trying to drink and shit like that. You know what I mean? Great. But like for me, like three like three months, I'm like, who? I can drink, you know. Might had a, had a might had a beer and a steak one time. We were at, we actually went to town for a lodge, and had had a meal at the at the Red Robin or some shit. You know what I mean? It was great. But the, yeah, I had, I had a beer with that shit. But but you know, but but for the most part, um, you know, I'm, I'm not. I mean, you know, I have my alcohol and you know, like my my and chill and check. My 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 my, my chill and check. But uh, well, we're all man, like I, that. I picture myself as a fifty. I'm fifty two. I picture myself. I go, bro, a fifty like a fifty three or a fifty. Like I see it, I see it right there. Like a fifty-three year old, like on March twenty-six, like coming up, like fifty-three year old Tony, like sober, like would be fucking bad, dude. It'd be a bad motherfucker. You know what I mean? Like I just, you know what I mean? That's just how we're programmed. I just, I just, I just know I'd be fucking because, and I, I know that's me fighting off a lot of demons and a lot of shit to get there. But man, that'd it's be just, cool. So just who you just are, to man. Talk about it though. It's nice because I think about I think about it every day and every second and every time I have a drink I think about it yeah and, and things like that so it's like man it's like can we end it uh, with one last question can you talk about the we don't have to go into the exact fight but you 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 fought Anderson Silva yeah and a, a lot of people never get the chance to even come close to fighting for yeah. a UFC championship belt well this was this was two thousand this wasn't even yeah. the UFC it was this it was this it was, it was this cage, cage rage title cage rage. I was trying to get into pride so it said, right. if you win this. Pride will take you. And I was already injured, so I had a couple of fights left. So I said, if I beat Anderson in Cage Rage, I won't have to defend his title, but they'll get me in pride right away as the Cage Rage holder, beating Anderson because he's a fa- – and then I can retire after even if I win, lose, or draw in pride. I could – I just always want to fight in Japan in pride. So that was my plan. And, I, and then I had the option to fight Chris Lieben or Anderson – in the UFC or Anderson and Cage Rage, I chose Anderson because I wanted to take. I was already been in the UFC, yeah. So I said, "Let me take the pride route." And it didn't how, work how does out. it feel didn't to be walking, work out. How does it feel to be walking around knowing you're one of two baddest men on the entire planet? Uh, well, is, well, is it, is one it of two is not the case. That's well, when the, you're fighting someone for the belt, you two are the the two under, baddest about to figure it out. That's got to be a, especially at a younger age, like it's the ego. Uh, like Mike Tyson talks about ego, but. It, you you just gotta fucking feel like Superman, you are right? the fucking man, Bob. Because I, I I appreciate that, dude. You're the fucking man because that's exactly how you have to think about, it. and that's exactly how I thought. Like honestly, like when people they go, you fought him, and because I see Anderson, he'll see me. Oh, he'll he'll leave. He'll go. He'll give me. My I think my head comes up to his like nipple right now. You know what I mean? They go, you fought him. I'm like, fuck, goddamn, I'm so small. Now. You know what I mean? And I go, yeah, and like, God, coach, you're a fucking savage, and but whatever, and I'm like, I'm like, bro, like, at that time, like, I like, I'm, I'm like, I thought I was gonna run through the guy, not run through, but I didn't think I was gonna lose the fight. I probably thought I could sleep more, submit him, but you got caught. You didn't really lose. No, I know, I know, you but that's but that's what happens. But that being said, I still feel that when you talk about celebrity boxing shit like that and all, I still feel that, especially now because I'm 20 years better now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's like, yeah, no, no, I feel it. But the whole thing is like my whole gift, my whole my whole purpose of being in a whole professional fighting career and amateur fighting career was when I become a coach to have better say than that guy because that guy was never where I was. That guy never prepared to fight that guy. That guy never actually put a game plan together, part one, two, and three game plans to beat that guy. You know what I mean? We never game played for the Uprising Elbow because everyone he was watching too much on Bach movies at that time. But 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 no one but but to train for and to train the best fighters, Militus, Sylvia, Pulver, Matt Hughes, all these guys, to train, you know, Robbie Love, to train these world champions. I train them all the time. I train I held pads with them, I train them. I was their number one training partner. I was in every camp with these guys as the guy. If I was not there, these guys may not have won the fights that they have won because I was their best look. Does that make sense? I got fucked up on their watch. 
You know what I mean? Like I was on there, and they, they I got not used. Yeah, but nobody was, talks about the no one talks about in the shit. gym. No, those are we were there to make each other better. But that doesn't happen now. But they, I, I made them better because I wouldn't fucking stop attacking Robbie Lawler with fucking boxing kicks and shooting on that motherfucker. And he would sprawl, get up, and fucking. Sometimes he wouldn't get up. Sometimes I actually get a takedown. Sometimes it wouldn't. It would get fucking pieced up again, that southpaw motherfucker. Right? Make sense? Iron and then, sharpens iron. All, and, yep. I, and that's how we lived. It was sick. And people would go, like I said, where'd that dude go? He's gone. That dude left. That dude left. They can't handle it. And it's, it was a rite of passage. My first cauliflower, all that from Matt. And they would grab it. And they would fucking rub it. I go, why would you do that? They go, I'll make it bigger. It's better. And they're just, it was like this. But that's Iowa style wrestling, military fighting systems. Team Quest, we wrote the fucking book on MMA back in the day. And these guys, all these guys, Frank Mir, Roy Nelson, all these guys, Randy Couture, all these, these Tito, all of them, all of them, shout out all of them. Frank Trigg, Robbie, all these guys, these are all guys that fight each other, you know? Yeah. You know them. But That's my whole the era, kids got to you know? be willing to go through what we tell them, trust what we're saying to you guys. And, and, and like Dana White says on that broadcast, he goes, I tell my kids, if you push hard on a couple, on a few, if you push just a little bit, you'll run everybody you'll run, over. Run all these soft pussies over, right? These all these, right? Didn't he say that? Yeah. Same thing. Same thing. And it's same true, thing, bro. Well, brother, it was, it was a, it was a blast, man. Man, thank you so I much. I told you, like, like chilling at the barbecue. Yeah, fuck, dude. You know, I'm not some, you know, nothing against some of these guys, but I'm just an army dude and a fan. You know? Hell yeah. It, uh, legend, Tony Fricklin in the house. Thank you so much, my brother. Ooh, all right, man. Appreciate it, man. <laughs> Thank you. Fight junkies, bitch. <laughs>